Do you believe in God? The person acknowledges who God is, you would know that he's deserving of worship because of the whole universe is created. Like, have you, yeah. Why make it a difficult thing to believe in? Like, why not okay. show us Good. physically who, that okay. there is a God? Like, that's, why that's, make it a choice for us? No, that's a good that question. There's a debate about it. The whole thing of evolution. So what's your view on sort of people who are gay? The religion is very oppressive of women in terms of sort of teaching and education, going to school, well, who said dressing, you can't, well, you can't how go they school. dress. Well, the Quran talk about sort of women having to cover up, but men, like, you know, it, no. The men can't control their gays. You argue that lots of Muslim women and religious women yeah. in general stay yeah. in unhappy marriages. Because that, that the idea happen. of divorce is yeah. kind of odd. But I feel like I'm stood here talking to somebody who's denying science and trying to convince me of I, I The, her question is, she's saying there's other religions yeah. uh, that they claim also they have the truth. Okay, yeah, so basically, Why is everyone, Islam in yeah, there? what's special about Islam? Yeah. yeah. So the thing is, sister, to be honest, there's a lot of people that call to, you know, their way. You know, but there has to be one truth. Would you agree that there has to be one truth, ultimately? Because if everyone's calling to something, there has to be ultimately one truth. You know, so what we say is that the way we do it, it's not just faith. It's not just like blind faith. Like, okay, I just believe. Because I came to Islam about nine years ago. So before that, I spent about three years looking into different religions. I looked at Christianity, I looked at Judaism, I looked at Islam, I looked at many other religions, and I had a criteria. So the criteria was if I believe any scripture, be it the Quran or the Bible, if it claims to be from God, it should prove to me it's from God, right? So would that be fair? So to me, the Quran was the only scripture that challenged me. So what God Almighty says in the Quran is if you think this is not from God, bring a chapter like it. Bring, make, make something similar to it, you know. So it's a bit noisy here. Do, do you mind if we go somewhere else or are you okay here? I'm fine here. Okay, so if you can't hear me, I'm just gonna just let me know, yeah? So the Quran puts a challenge out. Bring a chapter like it. Bring something like it. Now this was given to the Arabs because it came in the Arabic language. So the, uh, the Arabic, uh, the, the, uh, those who were poets in the Arabic language, they were par excellence in the Arabic language. They couldn't meet the challenge. Now you might say, okay, well, that's for the Arabs. But what about me? So Allah says in the Quran, you would find many contradictions and errors if, if this wasn't from God. So I looked into the Quran, I thought, okay, let me meet that challenge. So I looked into it, I read, I read it inside out and I couldn't find any contradictions and errors. Now, there is many arguments to why Islam is the truth. For example, do you believe in God? Okay, let's start off with that. There's no point talking about religion if we don't believe in God, yeah? Let's start off from the beginning. Have you read the study from Oxford University? There's someone called Justin Barrett. So, okay, basically, Justin Barrett did a um, study, yeah? And what he found in that study is he got young kids, and what he did in that study is he realized and found out that these young kids, if nobody tells them about Islam and Judaism or any other world religions, they grow up believing in a higher power. So it's something that's innate, yeah? So when some people come and say, did God make man or did man make God? So this kind of answers the question in the context where we believe in something called the fitrah. The fitrah means it's something that we're all born with, yeah? We see. So you have an atheist on the plane, when he's in a bit of a difficulty, he will turn to God. It's, it's, it's like inbuilt in his nature. So the question we ask is why? Why do we have the need that whenever we're cornered or helpless, we turn to a higher power? Why? Why don't I say mum? Or why don't I say... You don't see any other way out. Okay, all right. Hope. Exactly. So what we're trying to say is, this is built in, in, in us. So there are there are evidences that I can prove well, to you. That doesn't prove that we didn't make it though. No, no, no. It, it, well, okay. I'm not showing this as a solid evidence. I'm showing it as a supporting argument. Because firstly, it shows that psychologically, young kids who are brought up, not exposed to any religion, they believe in a higher power. Now, what Islam calls to is very simple. Islam says that we don't believe God is a man. We don't believe God is a statue. We don't believe God is in the creation. He is one and there is nothing like him. When you look at other religions in the world, you've got Christianity, they'll say we believe in one God. And I'll be like, okay, explain that to me. They'll say we believe Jesus is God. I'm like, okay. And they say we believe the Holy Spirit is God and we believe the Father is God. And I'm like, okay, that's three gods. They go, no, it's not three gods. It's three in one. So basically, if you think about it, if God Almighty, if I said to you that everything we have on our, in our universe, yeah? If, for example, it was created by God Almighty, is he deserving of worship? If we say, for example, that your eyes, it's my eyes, the way I'm created to how you're created, yeah? 
would you say that this creator, if he has, if I prove that he exists, is he worthy of worship? Is that I don't know or no? Well, no. What's the point? The point is this. Why if, I, if, I, if I'm a multi-millionaire multi and I come and say to you, what's your name, sister? Bethany. Bethany? Bethany? Okay, I come and say, Bethany, I'm going to give you a million pounds in your bank account every month. Now, I'm not asking for nothing back. I don't want nothing back from me. Would you feel inclined to maybe, if you know, I, my name's Ali, by the way. I come here every week. If I send one million pounds to your account every month, would you find the need, before going on your holiday and buying yourself a nice car and a house, would you not feel like, you know what, let me go see Ali today and just, just see how he's doing, I'll just thank him. Would yeah. you? Okay, the reason you do that is because you realise that innately you want to be grateful for something I've done without even um, me asking for nothing back. So the first thing you would do if I offered that to you is like, what's the catch? What does he want from me? Yeah. Now, if I don't want nothing from you, exactly. So if I say, I don't want nothing from you, I'm just going to send this to your account. I just want you to have a good life. Now, innately, you're going to say, well, hold on a second. The least I can do is come and see Ali. Are you okay? How are you doing? Is there anything I can help you with maybe, etc.? Now, when the reason you would do that is because of me giving you something. Yeah? Now, the reason I'm making this argument is because a million pounds is not compared to God Almighty creating us, sustaining us, giving us life and all the blessings that we have, right? So when we talk about worshipping God, it's not that he requires our worship. God doesn't require anything from us. It's because of who he is. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So just the way I would give you money and you would feel gratitude and you wouldn't want to just go on holiday and disregard me, you come here and maybe say, etc. How are you doing Ali, etc. If I can help you anything. It's the same way that if a person acknowledges who God is, you would know that he's deserving of worship because of the whole universe is created. Like, have you, so yeah. Why make it a difficult thing to believe in? Like, why not okay. show us good. physically who okay. there is a God? Like, that's, why that's, make it a choice for us? No, that's a good that question. There's a debate about it. Okay, the reason for that, Sister Bethany. Bethany. Okay, so, <laughs> Sister Bethany, the reason because of that is we believe this life is a test. So, God Almighty has put us here, and God Almighty says in the Quran, we have put you in nations and tribes so you can get to know one another. Yeah? So, I'm here reasoning with you. Now, me reasoning with you will be something that will be, I'll be accountable on the Day of Judgment and you'll be accountable on the Day of Judgment. Because, for example, if I come here and prove to you God exists and you deny it because of, let's say, argument, say, your ego or you just don't want to accept it, my job is to convey. Your job is to accept or reject, yeah? So, I can prove God exists. So, let, 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 me, let me make it very simple. Do you believe that something can come from nothing? You know, okay. So we are the same opinion. We believe from nothing, nothing comes because nothing is the absence of something. Yeah? So my argument here is the following. If something cannot come from nothing, then we know our universe began to exist. What gave rise to it? Oh, I'm okay. I'm okay. Oh, thank you. I'm okay. Thank you. So the argument is this, sister. Yeah? Something cannot come from nothing. So what caused the universe? Because we're not talking about... We're not talking about my jacket. Your jacket, for example, it has a purpose, right? To keep you warm. It has design, right? The buttons are in specific locations, yeah? You even have like a logo there, yeah? Very nice jacket, by the way, yeah? And it has a designer. So I know by just looking at your jacket, there I can see that there is someone of intelligence behind it. I know it's giving it purpose and it has design. So when we talk about evidence, what I say is, when we look around us, the universe is more complex than your jacket. Millions and billions of times more complex. If your jacket requires a designer and intelligence behind it, what about us? Do you get what I'm trying to say? That's the whole thing of evolution. Okay, but evolution doesn't take God out of the picture. Even if I go with evolution, like for example, there's a book, uh, it talks about Darwin, yeah? Darwin is the one who, you know, came up with this whole thing. He believed in God, he was a theist. So, God, do not conflate believing in evolution and believing in science. It doesn't contradict believing in God. God did not create man. No. He, he created atoms. Let's say arguments say, even though I don't believe that, but let's say arguments say we go with it. The first cell, it all started from there. Who created the first cell? The first cell is a very complex thing. It's not, I don't know what, what some people think it is. It's a very, very complex thing. You know the DNA, yeah? It's not, we're not talking about like a drop of water. It's a cell that reproduces. The 
question is, what gave it those qualities and attributes to reproduce? And let's say arguments say we went from a cell and we're here today. It requires a, a designer to give rise to that. So even if I was to go to the evolution route, no problem. It still requires a high intelligent power to give it that properties in order for it to evolve. So my argument is very simple. Something cannot come from nothing. It cannot create itself. We cannot say it was always there because infinite doesn't exist in the real world. So all we say is logically and rationally, yeah? Because if we're talking about logic and rationality, something gave rise to it. Now, I'm not saying to you that is Allah, of the, the God of Islam. What I'm saying is there is a cause. Would you accept that? Yeah, but I, I feel like I'm stood here talking to somebody who's denying science and trying to convince me. Of, I, I, yeah. Okay, so when we talk about science, yeah? Science is the method of using our five senses, right? So what we see, touch, hear, taste, and feel. No, so feel. Smell. So we use our five senses to come to certain conclusions, right? So scientists will do, will, will do different um, experiments to come to conclusions. At what degrees, at what temperature does the water boil? Yeah? So we know there is uniformity, regularity, regularity yeah? in the things that happen. So for example, I know if I try to walk through a wall, unless you're watching Harry Potter, yeah, he can go through walls, I can't. I'm gonna bang my face. That's a law, that's, that's, that's consistent. Anybody that tries that is gonna get the same results. You're not gonna get someone being like, okay, let me try it, I'll go for a walk. It is uniform and it's regularity, yeah? So what we're seeing is these laws are in place. Who makes these laws? Because we can't say, okay, we've got gravity, gra the gravitational force, yeah? We've got the atoms, yeah? We've got the DNA, yeah? We've got many other elements. What gave rise to this? Because we're made of atoms, right? Atoms do not have a will, atoms do not have consciousness, and atoms don't have intelligence. But I have a will, I have consciousness, and I have uh, intelligence. So the question is, how does an atom give rise to something like myself and you, who don't have the innate properties? So these are things where we need to reflect. So the reason I'm giving you these things is for you to reflect, because Allah tells us in the Quran, for mankind to reflect. He says, do, not, do they not look at the heavens and the earth? And in the alternation of the night and day, there are signs for those who have intellect, those who think. So what God Almighty is doing is he's trying to rev the engine. Saying, no, look, let's think about this deeper actually. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So there is a great amount of evidence to prove God. Like consciousness. Do you know consciousness is not something material? Do you accept that? Yeah. Okay, so we can say, when it comes to science, we, can, we should deny our consciousness. Why? Because we can't smell it, we cannot touch it, we cannot um, taste it, we cannot uh, smell it or see it. Yet we agree that it exists. So if that's the case, what we're doing is, we are deducing that our consciousness exists because you exist. You're here, right? I'm here, yeah? There was a famous philosopher, I think it was René Descartes. He said, I, I, I am, I exist, therefore I am. Or something along those lines, yeah? So the thing is, sister, otherwise what you do is you go into this complex thing of how do you know you're not in the Matrix? How do you know there's not someone controlling me in Pluto and you in Mars? Or should we say Venus, yeah? So the point is this, sister, yeah? Rag rationally and logically, we use our rationality and logic on a day-to-day -day basis. You came here, why today? Because you said you want to go out, maybe go to Winter Wonderland, have you been to Winter Wonderland? Bitches. Okay, you plan to go in there, yeah? So why did you bring your umbrella? What's the reason you brought your umbrella? Okay, so what you did is rationally and logically you said, okay, today's going to rain, let me bring my umbrella. It was a rational, logical thing to do. The question begs is the same thing. Do you not ever question yourself and say, who put me here and where am I going? Because you didn't choose to look how you look, I didn't choose the way how I look, I didn't choose my name or my brother or my mother or my sister or the fact that I have sometimes, different people have anger issues. Some people have the desire for the opposite gender. I didn't choose these stuff. These were all given to me. So the question I need to ask is, who put me here and where on earth am I going? These are questions that we need to ask ourselves because it's to make us realize, okay, there has to be a higher power and a higher reasoning because otherwise, what's the difference between you and my hat? You're made of, like, or, or, or something else. You're made of, composed from the same materials. So based on that, yeah. you say that, you know, these desires, people don't choose. Yeah. 
why so what's your view on sort of people who are gay okay so for example that is another topic but as muslims we believe it's a sin however now somebody committing the act and somebody being homosexual are two separate things so if somebody comes and says i have homosexual tendencies but he doesn't act upon them yeah now bear in mind sister uh, bethany yeah i'm bad with names sister bethany the point i'm trying to make here is the following yeah we have to first establish that a creator exists and why our purpose is once we decipher these two then anything that we ask about why does muslim women wear hijab why does muslim men for example have to grow their beard or why do you guys have to eat halal all of these questions will fall and make sense so what i'm trying to do is but denying somebody who you say that that's their, their sort of like that you know it's within them already then does that no no okay denying them that what purpose is that no so what we see is our job here is to serve a greater purpose which is god almighty now that has to come beyond our desires and what we want so like i said there, there might be men who want to go and sleep around with all the girls that's that's what i want but they can marry me no 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 of course not 100 percent. what i'm trying to say is just because one desires something doesn't make it right why where we get our uh, morality is from god almighty why, why is it not allowed in muslim culture no not muslim culture in the religion christianity islam judaism all of these religions it's not allowed because it's it's an act that god almighty has said that it's not and first if you think about it let's talk about forget forget um religion for a side yeah okay to me like for example if every man was gay first you have if you're, an, if you're an evolutionist it would have a big impact on our reproduction but they're not. if they were but they're not. No, no, I know, I know. But, but, no 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 but I'm, tr I'm trying to say to you for example that this is one maybe one of the wisdoms okay and number two do you believe yeah and at the end of the day I'm just I'm just trying to make you understand it yeah another man with a kid here just double check with having intercourse in another man's backside where he defecates from do you think that is natural yeah how other animals do it that animal, the animals for a reason animals and excuse my language animals lick their private parts to clean themselves we don't we don't do that so the, the, the argument i'm trying to make by the way look when i give these examples i don't i don't look at an homosexual person and think bad of him let's get that let's get that clear all i'm saying is it almost sounds like you're comparing them to animals no, no 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 what i'm trying to say is you're giving me an example of the anim, animal kingdom and i'm saying animals operate so in a different way natural, but it, it is because people you say that they, people are born to desire women like yeah. men desire women men yes. desire men women yeah. desire women Yes. You know, people do that, they're born with that. Yes. And you're we, we don't know if they're born with that. We don't know if they're born with that. We don't know if they're born with that. There's, there's a whole well, question. You do. We don't know. Says it does. I it's no, no, I understand, but I don't think there's any scientific evidence that shows they're born with that. Well, it's within the there isn't so any so evidence. Are you, but, but are you saying that people are born to, to sleep with women, like men? No, no, no. What like I'm trying to say is, no, what I'm trying to say is like that there is no evidence, scientific evidence that prove they are born gay. They, they, they become gay. We don't know the factors why that, that happens. But what I'm trying to say in a nutshell, sister, is that our job here is to serve a greater purpose. Okay. Now, homosexuality, like I said before, if one, for example, even commits the act, if he repents for it, yeah, then he is. You can, you can be a Muslim and homosexual. It's, it doesn't. It's not, it doesn't contradict each other. You can. No, you can. If you say that the act of homosexuality is permissible, then you become a disbeliever. But as a Muslim, there are Muslims who are gay. Well, that's what I feel is like certain things that are hard to get on board with. Then how? Yeah. Like, why would I get on board with something that penalizes yeah. other groups? Okay. And like women, for example, as well. Sorry, the, the, the religion is very oppressive of women. How? What, 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 what's, what's aggressive about it? Well, in terms of sort of teaching and education, going to school, well, who said dressing, you can't, well, you can't go to school. Dress. Oh, you can't go to school. Who said you can't go to school? Lots of cultures, Muslim Culture. religion. Culture. No, not the Muslim religion. Don't. Islam. Well, I'm talking about Islam. Put, put Muslims to a side. There's Islam and there's Muslims. There are Muslims who go and commit atrocities and blow themselves up. Yeah? yeah. There are Islam and Muslims are two separate discussions. Yeah? Women are allowed to education. Yeah? Women are allowed to education. The rights that women got in Islam 1400 years ago, the Western woman got 100 years ago. The right to inherit. Before woman was inherited, she was a product. She was inherited. The fact that you don't need to, in, as a Muslim, like my wife doesn't have to take my surname. Right? This was uh, this was 100 years ago given to the feminists. Yeah? The right to work, the right to own property. Yeah? The right for mahar. For example, as if you 
for example, you as a Muslim woman, if I was to marry, if I was to argue and say, let's suppose somebody proposed to you, yeah, they have to go about it in a certain way. They have to speak to your dad. Do you know why they have to speak to your dad? Because. A lot of the Western women fall for this trap of dating. I believe it's the biggest fraud. Because all you do is you're coming across men who you have no idea what their agenda is and you're committing to them and falling in love with them and they are all after one thing and they leave you broken and they leave. Yes. Uh, 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 no? Tell me why I not. I would argue that lots of Muslim women and religious women yeah. in general stay yeah. in unhappy marriages. Well, where would you get that from? Because, because that, that the idea of divorce is yeah. No, not at all. It's, in Islam, you're allowed to get divorced. Actually, Islam is, Islam is one of the only religions that allows a woman to get divorced. She has a right to divorce. Jews, Jewish, in the Jewish religion, a woman is not allowed to, it's called the get. She is not allowed to get that until, it's quite ironic, she's not allowed to get the get unless her husband allows it. So there was a documentary on, I think, Netflix, which shows these women that are still stuck with their husbands. In Islam, a woman has a right to divorce. This was also by, in the Western world, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the Western woman, feminism, in the past 100 years, they, I don't think they had a right to divorce, if I'm not mistaken. 1400 years ago, God Almighty, they're Christian, whatever it may be, but, 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 you say, but you said Islam oppresses women. Islam gave the woman a right to divorce. She has right to divorce. You know if a woman is not sexually pleased, satisfied, sexually satisfied with her husband, she can file for divorce. This is true. Yeah. So the thing is here, sister, the things that you may have heard in the newspaper, wherever it may be, is false. Islam gives, and coming back to a man wanting to marry you, the reason, for example, uh, he, he, if he wants to marry, he has to speak to your dad, is because if he has any ulterior motives, yeah, he would not want to speak to your dad. Number two, that uh, if you do get married to him, you have a right for a dowry. Do you know what a dowry is? Why, 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 why your dad? Like, what's wrong with speaking to your mother? No, your dad is your guardian. Let, let me tell you why. Because a man knows a man. And that in itself is a man, no, no, I don't think it's sexist like at all. It, it's almost as if my father owns me. No, not at all. See, this is this is give me away. no, not at all. Because the thing is, the Prophet peace be upon him said no one can force their daughters to get married. So the, this forced marriage concept is not in Islam. The reason it's your dad, if it's not your dad, then it's your brother. If not your brother, it's your granddad. Because what we say is a man knows a man. So if somebody comes to ask my daughter's hand, yeah, and I believe uh, certain times, for example, a man might be able to deceive uh, a female. Yeah, and, and, and it often happens opposite way as well. There are women who can do the same thing. The reason why it's there is to protect and maintain the rights of a woman. That's what Allah says in the Quran, men are the maintainers and protectors of women. Now, when, when this is said, a lot of people, the Western women take a step back. Why do I need protecting? Why do I need maintaining? But it's because the Western world has made you believe that Miss Independent, by the way, a Muslim woman can work. My wife can work if she wants. And what's very interesting is her money is her money. So I can't touch her money. So if my wife is a millionaire and I'm broke and I'm begging on the streets, I can't touch her money. So I'm just saying the reason this is in place, sister, is to save you from heartache. There is a lot of Western women. There was a woman actually, she was on um, Love Island. I think she killed herself. Yeah. I forgot her name, she was a blonde lady. And she was fed up of getting into relationships and with no end. So you have no security. Sister, let me make it very clear. No, 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 no. There was things that she mentioned about unstable relationships. Her boyfriend said something along those lines where she was in relationships and she would continue, it wouldn't work, they'll break up, etc. It's every woman's dream to have a nice wedding, to have kids. So you think yeah? just because a father casts his eye over a man that stops all sort of relationships? Okay, no, 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 because there's relationship drama in Muslim couples. I'm not talking about that. What I'm trying to talk about is, as a woman, God Almighty has um, allowed, and I don't, I don't know why the Western women think of this as like, I think it's an honourable thing for your dad to look out for you, even if it's your dad. If I spoke to your dad today and you brought, I'm arguing. If you went to your dad and said, "I've got a boyfriend," he's not going to be like over the moon. He's going to be like, "Okay, who is he?" He would want to know because he cares about you. Him caring about you doesn't mean. Oh, uh, you don't own me. He loves you. He looked after you. He brought you to this age. He has a damn right to care for you and know who the hell is this guy. And like, but surely you say my mother. No, no problem. I'm not saying your mother doesn't as well. I'm not saying your mother's out of the picture. It's, you're, it's all about the man giving away the no, woman. No, 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 no. It's not property. the man going. No, 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 no. It's not the man giving away the woman. If you want to get married, your your dad has to be in the picture. This doesn't mean your mom's not in the picture. Your mom can be in the picture as well. The reason why it's the dad because a man knows a man. Number one. Number two. When it comes to you getting married, for example, you have a right to ask for dowry. Do you know what dowry is? Okay. This can be anything. You can ask for a car. You can ask for gold. You can ask for money. Yeah. And by the way, this doesn't make you a gold digger. Yes, you're right. 
Why is this the case? Why is this the case? Why is there money involved? The wisdom might be is because if a man has the wrong intentions, he might not mind talking to your dad. He might say, yeah, oh yeah, I love your daughter, blah, blah, blah. When money is involved, yeah, and when you come and say to I want £7,000, that's my dowry. And that is yours, by the way. That is your security. Why? Because today we have men who go and sleep with, they call them deadbeat dads, yeah? Sleep around and disappear. She's left in a financial crisis. She's got a child that's coming on the way and has no damn security. So this dowry is in, is in place to protect you and secure you that if he decides to go about the things the wrong way. And even when you're pregnant, Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nisa that if you're pregnant, he, let's suppose you, you want to get a divorce. He has to keep you in, in his house until you give birth, until you suckle the child. Yeah? And it's called, I think it's called um, milk money, if I'm not mistaken. He has to provide basically. He has to look after you. The Western women today are emotionally, have you read, have you read a book called Beauty Sick? I recommend you to buy it. Yeah? It talks about how women are made to feel ugly and look a certain way, not happy with their body, not happy how they look, can't leave the house without makeup. Spend two hours. And they added this, and it's, it's like two months in one whole year, yeah? The society is making you feel ugly. You have to look a certain way, you have to have a certain body, you have to meet these standards. For who? For who? Islam says that there are men out there, for example, who might be after the wrong thing. It tells you to cover up, yeah? I believe women are being sexualized today. And people come and say, well, hold on a second, are you not sexualizing the woman by covering her up? Yeah? When a man speaks to you, even when I'm talking to you now, sister, Allah tells me in the Quran, tell the believing men to lower their gaze. Now what does that mean? That means if I'm walking down the road and I see a woman dressed inappropriately, I should look away. Islam deals with sexual objectification on a micro level to a macro level because it educates a man to respect a woman. If I'm, the only reason I'm talking... But doesn't the Quran talk about sort of women having to cover up but men, like, you know, it, you're causing temptation for the men no. the men can't control their gaze? Not necessarily. You know why? Because Allah, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't say in the Quran, men I mean, no, women cover up because men can't control the gaze. No, because Allah says in the Quran, before he tells the woman, he says, tell the believing men to lower their gaze and then tell the believing woman to lower their gaze. So it starts off with a man. We both have to do our part. Men are visual creatures. That's why you have strip clubs. That's why you have certain magazines. And you, do not, you don't see a woman going and saying, oh, let me buy a magazine to look at a man's calves. It doesn't happen because the way we're created and the way you're created is totally different, yeah? I do. I believe, I believe that's culture. I believe that's how you've been brought up to how, believe. How? No, no, this is, this is man's I biology. Think that's a nurture. No, 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 no. What, 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 nature. No, 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 no. If it's a culture it's, thing, it's, then why is it the same throughout every culture? Yeah, it is. Like, for example, there has to be a difference. For example, catcalling. Yeah? Catcalling. Uh, uh, be honest with me. Have you ever been catcalled? Yeah. Okay. Why? Oh, exactly, that's our point. They, they, they can be pigs. But the point is this, sister. The reason, not only cat code, I spoke to a girl in Piccadilly Circus and she was punched in the face because the guy wanted a number and she didn't want to give it. The point I'm trying to make here is the following. There are pigs out there. They exist. So what Allah gives us is a, God Almighty gives us a way of life that we can abide by. Now, this, like I said before, God doesn't say men can't control their self, so women cover up. This is nonsense. What God Almighty tells us to me is if a woman is in a bikini, if she's in a miniskirt, if she's wearing niqab, you know niqab? I have to lower my gaze. Not if she is wearing a niqab or no, period. I have to lower my gaze. So the reason I'm obviously I'm talking to you because I'm having a discussion with you, do you get what I'm trying to say? But I'm not going to be standing here and just staring at you. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Why? Because it shows you, you us sister, that Allah is telling us men that you should respect women. They're not sexual objects. That's why for example... Why the need to cover them up? If, if no, 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 because, because sister, it, it, for example, if we're doing our part, we expect you to do your part. How? For example, I'm knowing my gaze. I'm not going to look at you. I don't care how you're dressed. But this doesn't mean that you're going to be rolling around in a mini skirt, etc. Because there are not many men, like for example, like myself, there are absolute idiots who might, for example, try to touch you up. Isn't that kind of victim blaming? You're blaming no, I'm not. Women no, no, I'm not victim blaming. The, the actions of men that they can't control. Them no, not not really, sister. What I said from the beginning is a Muslim man. Yeah, our job is to lower our case. But you need to understand, as Muslim, forget Muslim man, all men. Period. If a woman who dresses up in a certain way, I bet you any money, she walk past here, she will grab grab the attention of a lot of men. 
why? The question is this Just because one is attracted Like catching the attention I'm not saying here That she has a right to be raped I've never said such a thing Yeah Nobody deserves rape There are women who wear the hijab That get raped The issue of rape Has got nothing to do With how you're dressed What we're seeing is If God Almighty exists And he's created me He's told me to lower my gaze I'm going to do my bit If he tells a woman To wear the hijab it's because of God said it. I'm just giving you maybe the wisdoms behind why he might do it. The point here is this. If he exists and he tells me to climb a tree and come back down and do five press-ups, I'm going to do that because he's deserving of worship and he's created me. So the argument goes back to who is telling us what to do? Your mom and dad, they brought you to this age. If your mom and dad said to you, darling, I want you to take Saturday and Sundays off. Don't go out with your friends. Come and stand here, sit here and give massage my feet. I believe as a mom and dad, they deserve that, period. Because of what they've done. Now, let's compare that to God. So the argument here, the hijab, it might be that, yes, it might protect you against certain men who are vile. But that's not the only reason. I'm saying that might be the wisdom. Maybe, maybe not. The actual reason is what? Because God Almighty tells me to, and he's deserving of worship. That's the core thing here, sister. Do you hear what I'm trying to say? And when a lot of the times when girls are being talked to, yeah? A lot of times men talk somewhere else. They don't talk to them, yeah? So if you realize, I, when I refer to you, I, I refer to you as a sister, yeah? I try to have a decent conversation. Why? Because as a woman, why do you have to feel like the only thing you have to offer is your body parts? You are a human being. You have so much more to offer humanity. Why does it reduce it to a level of just beauty? That's the reason why I read that book, Beauty Sick, because it shows you a pandemic of millions, billions of women around the world. They feel insecure, they feel ugly, they feel fat, they don't want to come out. There was a woman who read that, well, I'm a man, and I felt so bad. She goes, I felt so ugly that I would go and sleep with men. That is, you're taking a woman who can offer this to the society, and you're dropping it all the way here. Because she's made to feel ugly, and she thinks, no man wants me, so I'm going to have to sleep with them to feel some worth. That is disgusting to me. Why has she been made to feel to such a level that she feels sleeping with men because she feels ugly and nobody would want them? No, but how do we deal with that, Sister Bethany? My question is this. We have real problems and we need practical solutions. How do we deal with that? I go down, I'm driving down the A406 and I see a banner. And the boss of Anna, it's for steel, you know, steel company, steel. And there's a woman with a chili in her mouth. And I'm thinking, what the flipping hell has a blonde woman got to do with the steel company? I don't understand the correlation. No, it's ridiculous. But the point is this, a chocolate bar or a car. Because market, the marketing companies understand that men, it grabs their attention. So they're like, we know, a car has nothing to do with a woman. But we'll stick a half-naked girl there because they're going to stare at it. And maybe they'll just look at the car and say, oh, let me get that car. The point is this, women, <coughs> women have been sexualized to such a level that they have no rights. And this is a pandemic. We're talking about millions or billions of women in the Western world and in the Muslim world. Don't get it twisted. There are Muslim women who fall for this, where they object, they beautify themselves. The whole point of hijab is not to beautify yourself. It's the total opposite. So I'm telling you, it's a pandemic. And we need to deal with that because there are women who are feeling insecure. Mental health is on the rise. How do we deal with this? I believe we deal with it by honoring women, by teaching them their self-worth. Yeah, And this is where I believe Islam gives a practical solution not objectifying you, giving you rights. 1400 years ago, sister, go, do a bit of research. The right to choose who you want to marry. The right to not adopt, uh, take your husband's surname. The right to own property. The right to divorce. The right to work. Yeah? There's so many elements. Uh, even in the Quran, there's, there's a verse called uh, Surah Mujadila. Yeah? And some people come and say to us, oh, Islam says, you know, I, when I go home, I have a big stick and I beat my wife with it. Yeah? Okay, whatever. In this verse, God Almighty is rebuking a man. This is what he said to his wife. He said to his wife the following. He didn't hit her. By the way, hitting your wife is not permissible. Yeah? He said to her, you are like the back of my mother. Now, in those days, that basically meant, I have no desire towards you. That like basically, you're just ugly. Yeah? That's a very hurtful thing to say. Now, this woman goes to the Prophet Muhammad and complains and said, my husband called me this and I'm hurt. Now, the Prophet Muhammad, he doesn't talk of himself. He talks with revelation. So the Prophet Muhammad said, look, what he said is wrong, but forgive him, be patient. As she's walking out, revelation comes down. We believe that, yeah? And in the revelation, look at the punishment for him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, if I'm not mistaken, it says that he needs to 
fast for two consecutive months. You know in Ramadan we fast for 30 days, yeah? So he needs to fast two consecutive months and Ramadan. That's 90 days of fasting. So the woman says, look, my husband is old. If he fasts, he's going to die. He can't fast. He says, okay, he needs to free a slave. Back in those days, they had slave. It was, it was kind of a property. So he said, he has to free a slave. He said, look, he doesn't have slaves. He said, okay, then he needs to feed, I think, 60 people. Yeah? He said, he doesn't have a penny. Yeah? The point is the following here. All the man did was insult his wife. And Allah, God Almighty, imagine the one who created the heavens and the earth cares about a woman's feelings and sends a revelation down. What I'm just saying, sister, is there might be things that you heard about Islam, but look into it properly. Because then you will understand in every five people that come to Islam, free a woman. Do you know majority of people that come to Islam are females? Did you know that? Majority of them. There is a woman called Lauren Booth. Have you heard of her? You know Tony Blair? Tony Blair's wife's sister. Her name is Lauren Booth. She actually works with our organization. She, she was a British woman. Same lifestyle, etc. Now, if you search to try her name Lauren Booth, you can see her story, how she came to Islam. Yeah? There are many women. Why? Because women who live, for example, this lifestyle in the Western world, they realize. They realize how rubbish they are treated. Yeah? And I'm not saying in general, I'm not saying there are really good men who are not non-Muslim men. They're good people, don't get it twisted. I'm not saying all, all non-Muslim men are bad. The point I'm trying to make is that they realize the lifestyle that they live doesn't give them that fulfillment. You can have all the money, the, everything in the world, but you will have a void in your heart. Because that void, which Allah tells us in the Quran, is what? Only in the remembrance of God do your hearts find peace. What that means is, there is nothing on this earth that's going to make you happy. When you have that connection with God, trust me, they can take everything from you. They can take your money, your car, everything. Once you have that connection, you know your purpose, you know why you're here, you know where you're going. That is something, an inner peace that no one can buy. And I have tasted that with Islam. Now that's subjective. That's my experience. I'm not saying that's an argument for Islam. What I'm just saying is, sister, is that give Islam a chance. Yeah? You've got nothing to lose. Have you got Quran? Have you read the Quran before? Can I give you one as a gift? It's this big, it's this big. No? Okay, that's totally up to you. I would recommend you read the Quran, look into it, and see for yourself. You know, and if you do, like, like I said before, I did show some evidences to God's Almighty's existence. Pray to him. I prayed to him uh, maybe 12 years ago. I said, if you're there, guide me. I like, wherever is the way. That's a relation, that's, a, that's between you and God. So I would say, you know, give it a chance. You've got nothing to lose. And see what happens. Thank you very much, Sister Bethany. Look after yourself. It's a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much. Take care. Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. Hope this video was helpful for you. This may help others too, so please consider sharing. And we will bring more videos in the future, inshallah. So consider subscribing and you won't miss any. Jazakallah khairan.